Yeah, we've looked at quite a few of the people, not all of them, but quite a few of them. Uh, one that we missed out is Joseph, except in peripheral way. Uh, but what we saw and what I tried to stress is they all had their weaknesses, okay? Uh, they were men, men and women, and we not discussed too many women except uh, uh, Rebecca, I don't know if you could call her a woman or God. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Except that she was a medium or channel to bring forth uh, uh, Israel, so to speak. Okay. Uh, and anyway, so uh, we and they all had their weaknesses. I mean, uh, uh, if she was a woman of God, she had she was the one who had the most weakness. She was proud and scheming and you know whatever else you want to think. So what it tells us is. It, it, it's okay to have weaknesses because our strength is not in ourselves. Okay? Our strength is from the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And we have to understand that. And that, that's what the Old Testament studies show. They, they never ran away from God except for brief periods. They, they made mistakes, but they went back to God. And, and that's what we need to learn to do. If we make mistakes, we need to learn to go to God. So I'll open with a word of prayer because James starts off by talking about the difficulties of a Christian life. Okay. I'll open with a word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this morning, Lord, as we look at a, a new study from the New Testament, Lord, from your Holy Word, Lord, especially, Lord, uh, the book of James, as it teaches us, Lord, how we should live, Father, the living out our faith, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that as we go through this, Lord, even though it is uh, many sessions, Father, that you will guide us, instruct us. For, Lord, we all want to know how we should live as we follow you, Father. It's not easy in this world, Lord, with all the things that this world can tempt us with, throw at us, Lord, and even uh, entice us with, Father. We want to follow your word. We want to follow your Holy Spirit. So help us to study this book and understand it, Father, and to be able to apply it in our own lives, not leaning on our own understanding or abilities, Father, but fully trusting in the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All of you all, please keep uh, Mama in prayer. Uh, she was trying to sign in, but uh, I don't know why the kids could have given her the iPad. I mean, it's not like they, it's not that far away, right? And she could have left it at the uh, reception or something. She, she, she lives with her iPad because she always talks with her kids in America on the iPad. <laughs> and so uh, anyway. Uh, fine. So we're going to look at James today. And uh, today what I've done is uh, I've actually, uh, I've got a uh, subscription to a, a series which calls themselves the, the Netflix of Christian Bible study. Okay. It's called Right Now Media and, and thousands, not thousands, tens and thousands of video Bible studies. Okay. This was given to me by my friend Reji when I went to Calgary for Lisa's wedding, the one who conducted the wedding. Uh, I did pass it on to somebody. I'm sure I gave it to you, Ajit, okay? The subscription. Uh, so I'm going to take a, a portion from that. Uh, in fact, I did some studies uh, from that in my home in Kuwait also. So these are normally about 10 to 15 minutes each, and then you go and discuss it, okay? So today, uh, I know I gave out the notes to you all, and, and it's still very applicable. But today, what we're going to do is... Uh, Look at a study guide by uh, Francis Chan, okay? Uh, I have not actually heard him at all in my life till now, but he's a very famous uh, uh, English uh, uh, preacher, okay? I think he has his own in church and stuff. Maybe think he can advise us on that. Uh, so we're going to look at what he says about uh, uh, James, and uh, basically it's going to be the uh, verses from 1 to 12, okay? So let me just in, uh, play the introduction. Uh, and that's only one minute, okay, so don't worry. Okay. And then we'll come back. Where is it now? Did I close it? Yeah, it looks like I closed it. Hang on. No? I need to go back and open it. Oh, I always get messed up like this. I had it open and then I forgot. No problem. We can do it again. Okay. 
Okay, now uh, I need to just close this again. Right. Okay. Now it should be there somewhere. I still don't see. Okay. Let me see it. Okay. All right. Sorry for all that. <laughs> should be fine now. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. I have the honor of walking with you through the book of James. It's about true faith. James is writing to a group of people who have lost their homes, they're being persecuted, and even where they're ending up, they're still running into all sorts of problems. He says, these trials that you're going through, this isn't a waste. This isn't even a coincidence. This is something God wants to use in your life. And so often we don't think about that. And so often in the Christian life, it's just billed as, oh, follow Jesus. He'll make everything wonderful. He'll take away all your pain. He'll make you rich. It, you know, it's like, no. What God wants to do is not just make you happy. He wants to make you holy. Have you ever thought of that as the goal of your life? When you're pursuing the things of God, when you're we're truly following the Spirit into action, it makes resisting temptation and, and bearing up under the, the difficulties and the trials so much easier. This is about having a deep, deep relationship with God. It's about knowing Him and it's about Gosh, everything in my life revolves around him. It's an amazing thought. And I gotta ask you, do you have that type of faith? Give me the wisdom I need to navigate through this life in a way that honors you. Okay, right, that was just the intro and we have the first session also, but uh, as he said, it, I, I like the verse, uh, the phrase that he used. It's not about making us up, I'll stop with this. It's about, it's not about making us happy. It's about making us holy. It's, it, that's, that's so true and so crucial, okay? Uh, he does give us joy. There's a difference between happiness and joy. We need to understand that, okay? Joy can supersede our circumstances. Happiness is almost always uh, linked with our circumstances, okay? Uh, I don't think you can be happy in, in spite, you can have joy in spite of your circumstances if they are uh, difficult ones, okay? But uh, to be happy, you need good relationships, you need uh, reasonable, you don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from, you know. Uh, but joy doesn't matter, you know, it, 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 it comes and it can supersede any situation you're in. And uh, uh, I think the first uh, book that we looked at, it, it, it ends with the, uh, for, I mean, the first study guide, it ends with him saying, it is the joy of the Lord that overcomes all these problems that we're going to discuss. Okay, so now what we'll do is um, we, we'll follow with Francis Chan because uh, uh, I've got that set up. Okay, so we will just read uh, uh, James uh, 1, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. Anyone? A clear connection can do that, okay? One to twelve. I'll also get mine ready. On, I'll read. Yes, Joy, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. From James, a servant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings to the twelve tribes scattered all over the world. My friends, be glad even if you have a lot of trouble. You know that you learn to endure by having your faith tested. You must learn to endure everything so that you will be completely mature and do not lack anything. If any of you need wisdom, you should ask God and it will be given to you. God is generous and won't, be, won't correct you for asking. 
when you ask for something, you must have faith and not doubt. Anyone who doubts is like an ocean wave tossed around in a storm. If you are that kind of person, you can't make up your mind and you surely can't be trusted. So if you expect the Lord to give you anything at all, any of God's people who are poor should be glad that he thinks so highly of them. But anyone who are rich should be glad when God makes them humble. Rich people will disappear like wild flowers, scorched by burning heat of the sun. The flowers lose their blossoms and their beauty is destroyed. That is how the rich people will disappear as they go about their business. One more. One more verse. God will bless you if you don't give up when your faith is being tested. He will reward you with a glorious life just as he rewards everyone who loves him. Amen. Okay. Uh, Joy, just as a matter of interest, which version are you reading? Uh, contemporary English version. Uh, okay. CEV. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's quite different from all the others. Even mine, NET, which is yeah. supposed to be <laughs> the newest translation. It's simpler than mine also. Uh, so what we see here is uh, he is going to, we will look at Francis Chance's video, which is about eight minutes. But uh, before that, let's just go through it. Uh, first of all, as, as Francis Chan said, he is writing to all the people who are actually dispersed abroad. That means they've, they've run away from Jerusalem because of persecution. Okay, uh, We know that uh, that's what happened. And they say that this fish emblem was uh, established at that time. They would uh, uh, draw the fish with their toes in the sand to identify themselves with each other because the Christians were being persecuted at that time. People who, call, who said Jesus rose from the dead were being persecuted. Uh, so anyway, so he, he's writing to them because uh, it took him some time to become a believer himself. I don't think he was a believer at the time Jesus died. I've not done the study on that. If someone has done it, uh, they can uh, talk about it later or I will, I will find out uh, an intro to the book and forward it later also. So he's talking to the people and straight away he jumps into difficulties and trials. Okay. Now in James, the book of James, uh, uh, when they were discussing the canonical books, I don't know uh, wherever it was in Nicene or uh, not Nicene, I forget the place. Okay. Uh, Thoma would know, but anyway, uh, uh, where they decided what was the, what was going to be in the canon of the Old Testament and New Testament. A lot of the people were against including James, okay, because they said James doesn't have enough spiritual material in it. It's all about what you should do and uh, it's about how you should live. And, you know, we're talking about a spiritual book. Bible is a spiritual book. So, but somehow by, by God's plan and God's design, uh, we can't say God's grace because God is the one who put the Bible together, okay. James was included and that itself is an indication to us that works is important okay it cannot be just uh, faith without works okay? and james goes into that in depth later on okay but the fact that this book was included in the canon itself is a proof that uh, we need to do things we can't be just sitting at home and saying i have faith i'm waiting for the day that i'll be uh, you know uh, taken up in glory. No, we have to do things. Okay, and uh, uh, and he goes into detail. Of course, the other letters also include how we should live, but this is even more so, almost entirely about how we should live. Okay, so he goes straight away into saying, look, if you're going to really lead a Christian life, you're going to have trouble. Straight away, he says that. Okay, and he, I mean, he goes one step later. He says, consider it all joy when you fall into all sorts of trials and tribulations. Consider it joy. He didn't say. Be happy when you face all trials. He said, consider it joy. Okay, That's why I said it's so important to understand the difference between joy and mm -hmm. happiness. How, how can you be happy if you're in chains and uh, 
uh, perhaps you can. I mean, maybe we're just playing with words here. Uh, in chains and everyone's, uh, every two hours they come and give you 50 lashes or whatever it is, you want to be happy? How is it, how is it possible? You know, uh, I, I don't think, uh, see, I don't think Jesus was happy on the cross. It says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, okay? It, again, the word joy comes in there, okay? It was in Greek originally, but the, the English versions we read is joy. I don't know what the Malayalam version, what is the word that is used for, the, what, you know, when Jesus, says for the joy that was set before him. I like James, what is, it, what is the word used for joy in, uh, in verse 2? Sheba is looking it up. Verse 2, Sandosham. 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 Sandosham is very similar to happiness. I mean, I guess it's the same word. But English, surprisingly, English normally has uh, one word to have 100 meanings. But uh, surprisingly, it separates between joy and happy. Okay. Uh, Malayalam. Anandam. Anandam. Uh, could be. But uh, the standard Malayalam says Sandosham. Yeah. I guess Anandam is a little bit more closer towards joy. Anyway. So anyway. So he straight away jumps into the situation. Look, you guys are already, you, you run away from home. You're hiding, literally hiding here and there. I don't know how he intended for this letter to get to them, uh, but uh, he sat down and wrote this letter, okay? And he says, don't worry about your present circumstances. In fact, not only don't worry, one step higher, consider it joy, okay? I, I've always thought about uh, the uh, episode uh, of uh, Jesus telling the people, I believe it was the latter half of Sermon on the Mount, if, if a person strikes you on your left cheek, show him your right cheek. And if he asks for your shirt, give him your coat also. Okay. And uh, long ago, I, I uh, read, no, I mean, when I say long ago, really long ago, 20 years ago, one of the chapters of uh, uh, a book by Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was a, a pastor, a Chinese pastor who, uh, who died in prison, I believe, but uh, tremendous books he's brought out. I presume they are translations. Okay, and in one of them, he said, the, cha the chapter was titled, I believe, The Christian Reaction. Okay, And he took these verses of Jesus telling people, what you should do if someone strikes you on your left cheek, and if someone asks for your shirt, and if someone wants you to walk a mile. And he says, uh, you know, if, if someone comes up to a guy and, or woman and uh, slaps them on their cheek with the hardest possible force, okay, uh, a man who's, or a woman who's quick to react, you know, angrily, feeling that their rights have been usurped in one way or the other, will respond in like manner, okay? They will probably say, what the heck, and I'll probably punch him too, both sides, you know, <laughs> right? If it's a decent man who's peace-loving and uh, doesn't want uh, to get into trouble, he he'll just, you know, rub his cheek and say, this guy doesn't know what he's saying, I don't want to deal with him, and walk away. But that's not what Jesus says. He says, no, stay there and show him your other cheek. Have you considered that? This is the Christian reaction. Okay? If someone asks you for a shirt and you happen to be wearing a coat, chances are it's not warm in that place. Okay? It's reasonably cold. And in Jerusalem and all, there are times when it's cold. I think this time of the year and December, January, it's pretty cold. Okay? He says, if someone asks you for your shirt, give him your coat also. So if at all you've got an undergarment, that's all you'll be left with. Okay, in the court. And okay, one mile, two miles for me, that's not such a big thing. But these two were very, what he says is, you know, the guy might have been absurd in asking you for your shirt when, you, when it's cold. He might have been absurd in striking you. But you be absurd in your love response. This is the word Watchman Nee uses. You be absurd in your love response. No one expects you to show the other cheek or give your court coat also. You know, if you're a decent man, you'll give him the shirt, keep your coat and walk away. Or if you, you'll just rub your cheek and walk away. No, but Jesus is saying, show the other cheek. In other words, not just show it and then give him two. No, show it and take, slap on the other cheek. I mean, that's obvious. So by the way, uh, and give the coat also. So, and watch when he says, so that by your absurd love response, the guy will start thinking. What is this? What, why is this guy behaving like this? Or this woman behaving like this? Okay. And that's so important. Okay. So here he's saying, James, 
considerable joy because when you have joy certain things come out of you i think you you look more handsome more beautiful you have joy in your heart okay uh, happiness also helps that way you look better uh, but joy more so i would say so he says consider joy when you go through troubles and difficulties because it becomes a reflection of your faith to other people <clears throat> okay uh, talking about reflection again i keep jumping here and there. i don't know if we'll ever get to francis chan uh, there's a there's a christian singer i love very much her her name is sara groves groves and in fact i use her name for a lot of my bank password or not i won't tell you more okay <laughs> sara groves you should listen she was a teacher geeta and then she turned to music okay at a very old age lovely lovely lyrics okay and there's one song she says you are the sun and i am the moon the moon has no light of its own i can only reflect your light you know the moon is a dead dark planet we all know that right but yet it shines in the night why because the sun shines on it okay so when we say let let your light shine it, we are, we need to reflect jesus is light okay and when you have the joy of the lord in you that is exactly what you're doing you're reflecting jesus christ in and through your life it's so important i i i'll i'll post that song okay with the lyrics later on it, it's, i just love i just love the music you should listen to it okay anyway so he's saying this and 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 then he says as you have this joy you will learn to endure because it is endurance it is not something that comes automatically okay i have joy so all these things don't matter no yes uh, you have problems in life they will have an impact on you because you are still carrying around uh, as a mama explained the other time i don't know whether it was the chandra prayer or this one uh, we have the uh, body and the mind and the ego right those things will be impacted by circumstances okay but our spirit is where the real joy is and the spirit will will supersede all these situations so he's saying you will have all these issues but as you have the joy of the lord in your life you will learn to endure okay and as you endure you will become more perfect because you test your faith is tested when you have difficulties your faith is tested that's why some of these uh, uh, the theology that comes out of the west where you know it's all about prosperity even uh, francis chan mentioned it you no know, it, it's not that you become a christian and everything is okay no more toothache no more stomach ache no more needing to take any no you know it's not that you know i mean that uh, as uh, that's another book i read by james dobson when god does not make sense by the way and he says if life changed dramatically for the better in the material world when someone becomes a christian no one would need faith to become a christian it would be obvious and in front of you that hey this guy is a christian and look at him he's driving his own jet plane like uh, dire straits said you know look at this monkey he's got, he's got his own jet plane you know, you know i want my mtv that song was by the way uh, so you know you if if you if the evidence of your faith was in the material things that you have people would flock to the religion and that's exactly why these mega churches in america people are flocking there because the message that is preached invariably is prosperity you know is invariably invariably is material well being okay there, there are verses in the bible that suggest that uh, that you know we, we 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 do have that but more importantly when you come to a book like this it is guaranteeing trials it is guaranteeing trouble he's not even saying if he says consider joy when you face trials okay and then he says of course if you have wisdom you should if you don't have wisdom you should ask for god now who here has who doesn't want wisdom you know everyone wants wisdom wisdom by the way is the uh, what, what what's the thing i had in mind okay is the correct and good application of knowledge is called wisdom okay there is knowledge and there is wisdom knowledge you can gain okay but how you apply that knowledge will indicate whether you have wisdom or not okay uh, so wisdom is the correct and i would say godly application of knowledge okay so he is saying if you don't have wisdom ask god okay in other words he is saying okay you can gain knowledge uh, and the knowledge comes from three sources one is from your own practical experiences another is from education and i don't mean uh, structured education any kind of education you read other people other people's experiences are where education comes in okay and thirdly the christian believes that there is the direct revelation from god these are the three sources for knowledge to grow in your life but 
knowledge by itself knowledge puffs up that's what the word of god says okay knowledge makes you proud but knowledge appropriately correctly and godly applied is wisdom so if we don't we are, we are not able to do that we have all this knowledge and we, we we are messing up time and time again we ourselves know when we go wrong right we don't need anyone to tell us when things go wrong with us uh, so he says if you if you are on that sort of state ask god he will give you the wisdom okay and, and that's in line with the understanding that we need to be led by the holy spirit holy spirit is god okay and the holy spirit is is all wisdom unto us okay he teaches us from the word of god how to live okay so he says ask god if you want wisdom okay and then he says that if we we should also not doubt when we ask okay now that's a tough one okay a lot of people when they come for special prayers uh, uh, you know intercessory prayers and petitionary prayers where it is asking god for things right or okay we, we were probably all of us should pray, have an in, uh, intercessory prayer for our mama she's not doing well okay we're asking god to heal her okay uh, and it says you must ask without doubt now the question is you cannot just ask for anything and uh, not have doubt that you won't get it okay if you pray in the later on i believe james goes into that also you ask but you do not get okay and why is that because you don't ask in the will of god here he says you ask and you will get if you don't doubt okay? <laughs> you ask and you don't get because you don't ask in the will of god okay so that's important to know now healing for someone i, I would say it's in the will of god but the, the age comes into uh, uh, you know how, like for example my dad geetha and my dad how long do we did we pray for keeping him alive i, I don't i think about 2 3 years before he passed on we stopped that kind of prayer right just let him be happy while he's here and god you take him in your time that's what we would have prayed right and you are the one looking after him so you you know it's it's you are actually seeing the physical difficulties that he had so uh, so sometimes not doubting we we have to pray in the will of god and then not doubt because uh, for me the will of god the primary will of god for any believer is that no soul should be lost okay everything else of the will of god for our lives follows through from he does not want anyone to perish okay that's why when jesus was resurrected and this whole life uh, uh, this salvation plan is for everyone uh, in fact they say it is also for people who passed away before he was resurrected uh, not only that i mean the word of god also he says he was in hades for 3 days and he was preaching to the people who had already gone uh, but it's also for people in the future so for all sins of all time jesus died on the cross so because that is in line with the perfect will of god that not one should be lost that is why it is available to all okay so uh, from that follows the what do you say corollary or ancillary will of god okay this is his most perfect will not one should be lost because he created us in his image he put his spirit in us okay and and then things went wrong but he made a plan to bring us all all back okay so anyway and then he talks about uh, being humble in 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 our if if we happen to be materially well off we should be humble in that okay uh, and, and it's important to note that so that's about all that's covered here so i would like to just quickly it's about 10 minutes uh, uh, francis chan's uh, study on the first 12 verses so let's go there okay Hopefully it's still there. Yeah. Okay, so the second video. Oh, wrong one. Wait. James, a servant of. Okay, that's fine. Eight minutes. I have the honor of walking with you through the book of James um an amazing amazing book of the bible it's about true faith and i think part of uh what makes it so amazing is who James is writing to you see it right there in that first verse the 12 tribes in the dispersion 
You can read about that in Acts chapter 8. It's, it's when the persecution got so great there in Jerusalem that these people just had to run for their lives, and now they're just dispersed everywhere. And James is writing them, encouraging them, and reminding, look, this is about true faith. This is about something that's worth dying for. And so the first thing he talks to them is about these trials about all these different things that are happening in their lives. And he says a very interesting thing. He says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. So he's saying, count it all joy. Okay, all this stuff that's going on, count it all joy, even though you're surrounded by all these different trials, because he says, you know what? It's actually this testing of your faith that creates a perseverance in you. It's, it's making you stronger, more steadfast. And he says, let perseverance have its perfect work in you so you become mature and complete, not lacking in anything. He says, these trials that you're going through, this isn't a waste. This isn't even a coincidence. This is something God wants to use in your life. And that's so good for us to hear today, whatever we're going through. I mean, most likely what we're facing today doesn't compare to what they were facing back then. Consider it all joy because it's the testing of your faith and it is going to make you stronger. And this, this term for testing is an interesting word because it's, it's a term that the silversmiths would use back then where they would test silver. And the way they would test silver is they'd put a bunch in a pot and they would, uh, they would heat it up with this fire. And what happens is at a certain temperature, all of the impurities, the dross they would call, would rise to the surface and the silversmith would, 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 would just kind of scoop that top layer off. And then he would heat the silver up again and he would do this over and over again until the silver was tested or pure. And the way he knew that the silver was actually tested was he would look down and he could see his own reflection in the silver and, and I just find that such a beautiful picture because the idea of these trials in our lives he says is God testing you purifying you and as you go through them the idea is one day he could look down and see his own reflection like like you're becoming more and more like him that's the idea of being mature and complete not lacking in anything that's God's goal for me that's God's goal for you is he wants me to be a reflection of him. He wants to use the trials in my life so that I persevere through them and I rid myself of those impurities. Just like Jesus was suffering, I become more and more like him in that suffering. And so often we don't think about that. And so often in the Christian life, it's just billed as, oh, follow Jesus. He'll make everything wonderful. He'll take away all your pain. He'll make you rich. It, you know, it's like, no, what God wants to do is not just make you happy. He wants to make you holy. He wants you to be a reflection of him. And it's the trials, it's the sufferings that make us more and more like Christ. Have you ever thought of that as the goal of your life? say, God, I want to be just like Jesus at the end of my life. And so whatever trials it takes, give it to me because I want to become more and more like him. Someone explained to me like this, it's almost like when you bake a cake, all the different ingredients that you put in like eggs and flour and butter and just all this gross stuff, you, you don't really taste each of those individually. It's about mixing them all together and, and putting them in the oven and out comes this end product. See, that's God's desire for us. So often we don't think about this. We don't think about the end result, but he says, I want you to be mature, complete, lacking in nothing at the end of your lives. And, and so sometimes these ingredients that he puts in, may, they may not taste that great to us. He's like, no, let it do its work. It's, it's building character in you. It's making you stronger. And it's gonna make you more like Christ. In verse five, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it'll be given to him. He's saying, if you don't have the wisdom to understand that these trials are actually for your benefit and they can actually be a good thing, then pray and ask God. He'll give you, he'll give you the wisdom that you're asking for. He'll give it to you generously. But in the next verse he says, but if you pray, don't doubt. 
He says, if you're if you doubt, he goes, you're you're like a double-minded man. You're you're like a, a wave of the sea, just blown and tossed by the wind. But instead, you have to pray in faith. And then he he continues just talking about how the suffering can be a good thing. In fact, sometimes the riches are the things that are unstable. It's like, man, when, when life is so easy and so good, recognize that that may not be the best situation for you because they're like flowers that could be here one day and it just withers and it's gone the next. And then I, I love how he closes it in verse 12. He says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. He says, blessed is the man who perseveres. You make it through these difficult times. And remember who he's writing to. He goes, get through this. He goes, because if you can persevere through this testing, okay, if you get through this test, he says, you'll receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. It's interesting that he would use that phrase, love him. Those who make it through the test, he says, are those who actually love him. It's easy to love God if he just gives you everything that makes you feel so good and makes your life so comfortable. But what about when he says, you know, I wanna put trials in your life because it's gonna produce this character in you. And you're not down on that earth just to have a good time and just to be free from pain. So persevere through those trials. Allow God to use them to purify you. He says, because when you've made it through, you'll receive the crown of life or the crown which is life that God's promised. It's talking about that eternal life where there'll be a place where all this pain will be gone. But for now, we persevere. Okay. Could we just stop it? I thought I stopped it. It's not going anymore. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So uh, that was good. Uh, the, most of them are these short ones, so it's good to watch. And Francis Chan is quite popular, except as I said, I've never heard him before. He's written a lot of books also. I think his church is in California somewhere. Uh, anyway, so uh, more or less uh, what I said, but I also noticed that, you know, he just read out the words. Uh, half of his uh, message was just reading out James 1 to 12. It's that simple, isn't it? I mean, actually, that is the fact. The Word of God is what convicts us. It's the Word of God that speaks to us directly. Okay, the preachers are good, uh, commentaries are good, explanations are good, detailed study is good, but it's the Word of God that actually speaks to one who wants to see God and, and learn to love Him. And that's something he said, of course, Learning to love Jesus, learning to love God through our difficulties, okay, that is the kind of person that pleases God and the crown of life awaits him or her, okay. So anyway, I'll go through those questions now that he's got for us. Uh, okay, uh, who was James? How does he describe himself? Who wants to say? I think we, we got our numbers reduced somewhere. <laughs> yeah, she was out. No problem. Who was James? Ajoy? And how does he describe himself? I would answer. <laughs> Ajit, kai wo kya? <laughs> Just to put it on your chin. Okay, fine. Okay. James describes himself as, as a servant, servant of God. God. As a servant of God. That's what, okay. Uh, mind you, he was the brother of Jesus Christ. Okay, or half brother. You want to call it that. Uh, and he describes himself as a servant of God. He doesn't say, I'm Jesus' brother and you know, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and for me, that's another thing. I think I mentioned it in this uh, group earlier. The family, you know, to understand the family, we need to go back to uh, one verse when, uh, when Jesus is surrounded by the crowd and some people come to him and say, look, your mom and your brothers and sisters are waiting outside. And he asks, who is my mother? I mean, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Anyone who does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. That he tells them while they are waiting outside, mind you, okay? Uh, and then later on the cross when he's suffering, 
and his mom is standing there. Uh, and uh, none of his brothers or sisters, I don't know if he had any sisters, were there, okay? But John, his beloved disciple, was there, standing next to his mother. And he talks to John and says, here is your mother, okay? And he says to Mary, I don't know, he always called her woman. Woman, here is your son. Even at the wedding at Cana, I think he called her woman. Okay. Anyway, uh, see what he's... And from that day, John took her into his own house, it says. The word of God says, John took her into his own house. Okay. The implication there is the spiritual family is more important than even blood relations. Okay. The spiritual family because he had brothers he had sister he definitely had brothers okay and they could well and it was their duty to take care of their mother okay but jesus felt that she would be more better placed and better sorted living with john okay knowing that john had understood what he had preached all those years and would continue to live in that uh, understanding and that's where he wanted his mother to be so that's very important to know okay, that the relationships, okay? So anyway, coming back to the question. Uh, okay, as you said, he didn't introduce himself as a brother of Jesus, okay? And uh, he addresses it to, as, as uh, Francis Chan mentioned, to the, the 12 tribes, like the people who have, who followed Jesus after his resurrection and are facing persecution because of that and literally had to leave Jerusalem and the surrounding areas and run away to places where the Roman or uh, the, the Jewish control was not that much. Okay, uh, <clears throat> So uh, it's quite simple. What he's saying is consider it joy and uh, he's explained uh, uh, what that means. I also explained the joy, difference between joy and uh, happiness. Okay, And the end result of the testing is... Uh, you know, Jesus looks down at us and sees himself. That, that's so beautifully done. And he explained about the, the, the dross and the silver so that the, the silversmith sees his own reflection. In the same way, when the, the end result of all this testing, you know, perseverance produces wholeness or completeness, it says. Completeness means being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Okay, And, and that's just so, that's, it's so wonderful. And this just just 12 verses of this book. It's not a big book. It's only about five chapters, I think. Okay. And the other thing that he said is God is not in the business of making us happy. Okay. He's in the business of making us holy. Be ye holy as I am holy. And in that growth, he will give us joy. Okay. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a great thing. I just want uh, comments uh, from you all. Of course, there are there's some comments on how to live it out, okay? Uh, for example, it says, uh, in conversation, okay? Uh, some of us complain a lot. What if we followed James and started considering our troubles with pure joy? Who would you contact this? Who could you contact this week by email, phone, text, or in person? And instead of complaining, tell them about the way God is helping you grow. Okay, we always have our, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, Aunt Agathas, right? We, we have a certain person, we call them and say, oh, this happened to me, or that person did this to me, or things are not going well, you know. Uh, he's saying, don't do that. If you have to uh, breathe, do have a problem, he says, ask God for, and now I understand, he's, uh, he's not saying just ask for wisdom, no. Ask God for wisdom to handle your trials and tribulations. That was made clear by James and uh, by Francis Chan. And that's, I think that's important in the context. He's asking, yes, if you, are, if you are not able to handle this, ask God for wisdom, you know. But I'm telling you, just hold on, persevere, and you will be made whole, okay? And then, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but anyway, the second point about living it out, first one was conversation, how we talk, okay? The second one is journaling. I've never been able to do this except... When I was in school, I had a few diaries, and then uh, possibly when I was a uh, courting Leela, I'm not sure. Okay, journaling. It says write about your struggles. Now, Leela has written, I don't know, I've got about 25, 30 books, the diaries that she's filled up writing. What to do with all this? I don't know, but it helped her. Okay, that's the important thing. Write about your struggles. Don't hold back. Okay, 
uh, complain all you want in your journals. Okay, but then go back to your journal the next day and jot down some notes about how God is making you mature and complete. So the journal is the place where you write down all your frustrations and complaints and stuff like that, because in effect, it is communicating with God, okay? So living it out, we've discussed conversation, we've discussed journaling. I don't know if I'll ever get to that, okay? Because my handwriting is terrible. Uh, maybe you can journal on the computer or on an iPad or whatever. You don't need to have to write with your hand, okay? The third thing is memorization. Again, another, another area where I'm very poor. My friend Lalu, he can reel off Psalms and Isaiah like nobody's business, okay? Uh, but I can't. I, I'm, Psalm 23 itself, nowadays with all these versions, I'm a bit confused. <laughs> but I did know Psalm 23 at one time. So memorization, it says, learn James 1, verses 2 and 3, and maybe verse 4. This will be a powerful support to you in the toughest time. Let me just go back to verses Okay. Verse 2 says, My brothers and sisters, consider it nothing but joy when you fall into all sorts of trials because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And verse 4 is, And let endurance have its perfect effect so that you will be perfect and complete, not deficient in anything. This is my translation, New English translation. So he says, By heart that. Um, by hearting, I guess King James is the best uh, because it, it gives a certain aura, right? I mean, but uh, I, that's all it is. It's just an aura. The word of God is in all the versions. Okay, uh, so consider memorization, and then of course prayer. Okay, in prayer, consider others who are going through difficulty, not your own difficulties. Okay, consider others who are going through difficulties. Ask God to help them to grow. Again, about growing, not that the difficulty should go away. Okay, ask God to help them to grow so that they also become complete, not lacking in anything. Okay, and finally, how we live it out is influence. Can we be a, uh, you know, be the influence of spiritual growth in someone else who's going through trials? But there is no stage at which, uh, no stage of growth at which a Christian cannot be an influence to another person. You don't have to reach a certain level before you, you start, uh, you know, uh, talking to people, okay? Well, how God convicts them, that is between God and them, but we can talk. So tell them, tell people, okay, who's going through trials that this, this first, first section of James has been just, you know, tell them, go, go and read James and see what it says, you know, and uh, it could help a lot. All right, I'm done with the, my portion. Now, uh, anyone, Ajoy, any comments? No, oh. <laughs> something new. This is so. Yeah, well, this is about uh, practical Christian living. Okay, that there will be difficulties. I don't think there's any Christian who's had it so so smooth in their life. Okay, uh, I, I mean, and that's like any other uh, person who's not even a believer. Everyone has ups and downs. Okay, but in the case of the Christians, especially the ones that James is addressing. These people were going through trials, persecutions, and dispersion because of their faith, because of what they believe, okay? Uh, and uh, not that we should be there, but we, we should hold on to our faith, and we should learn to live according to our faith. I, I keep saying that everything that we do in a Bible study is to teach us how to live while we are on this earth, okay? Uh, it's not just a preparation for heaven. That means you just need to practice songs and clapping hands and stuff like that, because apparently it's all worship all the time, and nothing else. You know, so, Ajita, uh, you guitar, what you going to do? Okay? I joke a lot with Ajit, but uh, he, he's an amazing people, uh, he brings people together, okay? He, like, he'll call me, did you call so-and-so? I said, no. When did you last talk to him? Yeah, I'd say, what, three months, my God, more call him today. He's that kind of guy. I got another friend, uh, uh, knows Jake's uh, he's like that. He always calls and says, Mohan, when did you last speak to Krishna? Or whatever. You know, so Ajit is like that, but he is my Christian brother. Okay. Yes, is not. Okay. Fine. So that's good. So uh, it's about how we live in difficulties. And the rest of James, we look at its 12 sessions. I think we'll stick with Francis Chan because uh, each study is only about 10 minutes. Uh, each video is only about 10 minutes. Okay. And he's got detailed uh, 
Bible uh, study guide, which I've sent you, okay? Each session has its own single page uh, uh, questions and uh, how to live it out. There's also a detailed study guide, which is meant for the leader, but I've sent it to all of you anyway, okay? Gita, you want to say something? I don't think yeah. No, no. It's good we are doing a, a book like yeah. this. So, you know, uh, because in BSF we are doing Genesis. Of course, it's very, it's very, um, what do you say, fantastic or what do you say? It's so many things that, you know, yeah. you can't understand. Whereas in the New Testament, it's so uh, easy to understand because we have Jesus as our, you know, uh, as our, yeah. A role model or men is God and the, whatever he went through you know because I remember when uh, you know when I had some difficulties in life uh, a mama was there at that time she said you know see Jesus went through so much you know so yeah. he's our role model uh -huh. so you know whatever we are going through it's nothing greater than so he's with us and you know he holds us up through our trials so that's yeah. what sometimes it's difficult that when you're going through trials to um, of, you know, see that you know because you are so down yourself. So I think the prayers mm -hmm. of our um, Christian, uh, you know, um, I mean, family will at that time help. Of course, a lot. Yeah. True. Yeah. Ajit, anything? Too early for you? Yeah. I mean, thanks for bringing out this on this the book, James. It's a very Practical book. Yeah, I I always uh, take an inspiration from this particular chapter a lot. Apart from proverbs. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So, will you be working on a series, or uh, how will yeah. your pattern going to be? This is a series. This is a ready-made study guide. In fact, I've got two now. Francis Chan. This only this morning I picked up, but it's got videos, so that helps. The other one was just a book with the notes, okay? Uh, so we'll continue with Francis Chan. Okay? Uh, he's, a, he's a recognized preacher. He doesn't have any, as far as I know, no, no false teaching or any kind of doctrine that may be uh, incompatible with what we believe, okay? So there are preachers out there you have to be careful about. Uh, uh, he, he, he seems to be okay. okay? And if I, if I send something wrong, I'll let you know, definitely. Definitely not today's... Uh, uh, session. I mean, absolutely nothing wrong with what he said. Okay, Pinky, something from you? Yeah, praise God uh, for this book. Uh, though it is twelve verses, it's like hardcore, you know, essence of life, uh, which we always trip and fall. Uh, first of all, this video of uh, Francis Chan was uh, beautiful, and the illustration and the way he explained, you know, it uh, it make it strikes you know it uh, strikes a chord and it's like uh, like you will remember this example you know of that uh, silver being tested and the impurity removed out with the every process when the impurity surfaces up in the heat uh, it is removed and finally the test is you are reflecting uh, yes. you know christ in your life yeah praise yeah. god yes. so um, when i read this verse the first thing I found is like, you know, the second verse, my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials. I was thinking, what should be your mind when you face trial? Uh, if you are humble, okay, you will consider it a joy. If you are in a mind which is proud, you will be angry. You know why this, you'll be upset and you'll be frustrated with the trials mm -hmm. in your life. But if you're humble, you will count it as joy. And also, I was just um, imagining, uh, you know, when we first come to Christ, uh, when we first come to Christ, we are so, um, we are so full of energy and joy. Yeah, you know? we are, we are, Yeah, <laughs> we are ready to go out and do anything for Christ. So he's saying, like, when you face trial, this is your, you know, first commission that you're going through. Like, you know, in army, when you join army, you are coming from a different... Oh, by the way, uh, Pinky's dad was in the army. <laughs> no, no, it's not uh, because dad is in the army or I've seen anything in the army or anything, but I was always like inspired by the background and uh, the training session. You know, I've seen a movie where, um, Hindi movie where, you know, they are trained and how difficult the training is. They are put in a routine that is so tough till 
they get that mind where they are trained and they are all thinking and performing in one accord. Mm, yeah. That's, so, that's like, you know, yeah. Uh, so uh, I was just thinking, like you know, when when we are a new recruit, we are so excited, but uh, we have to be humble. You know, we should not be proud or you know, uh, full of uh, uh, you know uh, knowledge that we know everything and go and do you know things that we are not supposed to do. So I find it count it all joy when you fall into trials because it is going to uh, shape you into. A character which God wants you to fulfill His purpose. Yeah. So, and it should not finish when we are a new recruit. Till we, till our end, we should always count it as joy when we face trial because we are learning something new. Amen. Thank so you. Very that insightful. That's good. Even somewhere else, and, Saint Paul, Paul says, "No, I mean, uh, people in the army, a soldier, does not concern himself with the matters of this world." Of the world. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's basically uh, what we are called to do. It's difficult because we all have our uh, uh, responsibilities. You know, family is uh, an obvious uh, source of responsibility for all of us. Okay, and. Uh, but God is saying, no, your relationship with Christ is higher. But not your ministry. As I said earlier, the ministry is always second to the family. If you're already in a family relationship, your relationship with God comes first, then yes. your relationship within the family, and then only any kind of ministry. Okay, otherwise, because the family is the structure that God has designed to, uh, to mimic or uh, uh, shadow the relationship between God the Father, mm -hmm. Jesus, and the church, okay? And, uh, uh, and as I said, that's why Satan is attacking the family most in this world today, okay? More than individual temptations, I think, at, at a, on a global scale, he's attacking the concept of family. And, and people are now, you know, my son gets upset with me <laughs> if I talk about uh, anything, the you know, LGBT stuff and all that. I say, look, I don't believe all this stuff. I don't. I, I stopped watching a movie recently. It was a, It was a, um, I love the movie. Okay, till I came to that part. It's called Margarita with a Straw. It's about a handicapped Indian girl from Delhi. Uh, very, uh, you know, a very uh, self willed person. She goes to America to study. And everything. And she's been following uh, guys, even though she's completely. And you should see it if you don't mind watching about El, you know lesbians. Okay, you can see it. <laughs> Because after she re she's going after guys, it doesn't work out in the college in Delhi. Okay, then she goes to America and she and she tries for a guy again, but then finally she falls for a Bangladeshi woman. Okay, and uh, well she and I stopped watching there because I don't I can't. But you know what I'm saying is the world. I mean, my son uh, actually put a sort of a thing on his head. Uh, uh, GIF in our group saying, "Oh, these elders, you know, they're so uncomfortable with a lot of things." And he would argue with me that I, I'm wrong to not watch that movie. So this is what's happening. The devil is attacking the structure of the family as God has ordained it. And much as we might say it's okay, nobody says don't love those people, okay? The Bible does not say not to love them, but it says don't follow their practices. It is, it, the Bible is very clear that it is wrong. Okay? Now, I don't know, Gita, might have, anyway, let's not argue about that. They're just saying, uh, how we should live, okay? So, all good. Uh, Ellen, you want to say anything? I know you said you don't want to talk, but uh, if you want to, you can. <laughs> no, no. I, it's right. difficult for me to say anything now. I think I'd rather listen than okay, talk. That's fine. No problem. Eventually, you have to say something, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me some time. Yeah. All righty. No problem. Okay, then. Thanks. Mama couldn't sign in, but I've recorded it, so... Perhaps she can watch it later, you know, because it's it's a series, so it's good that people uh, uh, watch the whole thing. So Prem has told me, Prem has told me after your Bible study, remove your halo and give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he not in today? They have traveled to Cochin. They're here now. Okay. Okay. They're also just walking distance from mine, so yeah, I might go there for lunch. Let me see. Okay. All right. Yeah, they, I don't. I think just because it's a long weekend, they've come over. That's all. Okay. Yeah, Diwali. Yeah. Diwali, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Let's hope this is a good study. Okay. God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Manjai. Make sure to buy sugar free sweets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Francis Chan didn't mention sugar when he talked about the cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also noticed. <laughs>
Bye. 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 Bye.